Today, I'm going to show you how to set up your TP-Link router. And before I start, I want to remind you that if my video will help you, please support my work. Half of all donations I send to animal shelters. All details are in the description down below. So, the first step is to power on the router. Take the power adapter. Connect one end of the power adapter to a wall socket and the other end to the router. Then press the power button. Once it's on, an indicator will light up. It may take a few minutes for it to completely turn on. Next, connect the cable from your broadband provider or from your modem to a special internet port. This port is often called WAN and is usually a different color. Each cable should be inserted until it clicks into place. Now you need to reset the router back to its factory settings. Press and hold the router's reset button for 10 seconds. Wait until the lights on the router start to flash. Sometimes, this button is located inside the router casing to prevent accidental presses. Use a thin object to push it down. The router will restart and all the settings will go back to their original factory settings. Plug one end of the Ethernet cable provided with the router into an Ethernet port. Plug the other end into your computer or laptop's Ethernet card. Please wait a few minutes for connection. Great, the router is now connected to your computer. Now, you will need to set it up. But before we begin, I will demonstrate an alternative way to connect the router if you don't have an Ethernet cable or your computer doesn't have an Ethernet port. Just connect the router to the power adapter and the cable from your internet provider. This will enable Wi-Fi. If the router is new and has never been configured, the Wi-Fi network will be named as your router. Your router has a unique Wi-Fi network name and password that is printed on a label. Connect to it. Great, you've connected to the router. Now let's start setting it up. First, open your web browser and visit the URL you see on the screen. Use the URL bar instead of the search bar. At the beginning you will see a form with a login and password. Usually it is admin and admin. If these credentials are wrong, then find label on your router. The credentials are often printed on the bottom of the device. If none of this works, it means that your router has already been configured and someone has changed the login and password. If you can't find out the login credentials, just reset the router to factory settings. And then log in to the router's personal cabinet using the standard credentials. If your router settings do not look like mine, it means that your router has a different firmware. I made a video for every firmware type. You can find all the links in the description down below. I want to warn you right away that there are many firmware versions and they may differ slightly. But don't worry, you will succeed, just watch the video and follow the instructions. At first, you need to set a password for the router's admin panel. Click on this button. Keep in mind that, depending on your firmware version, some setup steps may be different or appear in a different order. But don't worry, you've got this. Just watch the video and follow instructions. 
On the first screen, select your time zone. If you're not sure which one to choose, just select any. On the next page, select your internet connection type. This is usually specified in your contract with the internet provider. If you don't know, try clicking on this button for auto detection. The router will attempt to determine the connection type automatically. If detection fails, select Dynamic IP. Depending on the type of connection you selected, the next page might look different from mine. If you chose Dynamic IP, you'll need to select one of the options shown. If your internet provider allows internet access only for a specific MAC address, you'll need to clone the MAC address of your primary computer. If you're not sure, just select Use Default MAC Address. In most cases, cloning the MAC address isn't necessary. But if you don't get internet access after the quick setup, repeat the setup and try cloning the MAC address. On the next page, set a name and password for your future Wi-Fi network. You'll see one or more available Wi-Fi bands for your router. If there are several, enable them all and set a name and password for each network. When you write the credentials, click the next button. If you were connected to the router via the Wi-Fi network, reconnect to it. On this page, you can configure the TP-Link cloud service. You don't need to do anything here, just click Skip. Next, you'll see a summary of all the settings you've entered. Click this button to confirm. Wait while the router tries to connect to the internet. If it fails, double check that all cables are properly connected. Click Skip, then try rebooting the router. If it connects successfully, check whether the internet is working, just Google something. If it's still not working, you'll need to reboot the router manually. To do this, go to Advanced. Then select System. Select Reboot tab and click on the Reboot button. Then check whether the internet is working, just Google something. If the internet still doesn't appear, log back into the router's admin panel using the password you created at the start. Go to the internet. And then clone MAC address. Save the settings. Reboot your router again. And after a couple of minutes, check internet connection. If internet still doesn't appear, contact your internet service provider. He will tell you what type of connection you have and what other settings you need to do. That's all. If my video was useful, please support my work. I send half of all donations to animal shelters. All the details are in the description below.